several ways to place corners and borders on your quilt, but the trickiest is an L-shaped corner, and let me show you how to do it. I have some quilts laid out here of different borders techniques, and so let's look at these. First off, this is a peppermint candy one. This was digitized by one of my friends, Hattie Brown, and uh, she allowed us to use this quilt. So this is a fun one, but look what she's done. She has started her border right here, but she's placed a, uh, the same peppermint candy here in the corner. Just resized it, turned it on point, and placed it in the corner. So she didn't have to match up the corner and the borders. They stand on alone. The next one is a baby quilt with ducks and lambs on it. And the same thing goes, she's taken the duck and placed it in the corner and then used some freehand quilting to frame it. So that kind of gives you a cornerstone and then went off with the lambs and the ducks. On this quilt as well is another technique and that is the stars here. This goes starts here and just goes to the other side. Then again, the quilt's turned, so you're gonna have to take it off the frames and rotate the quilt, and then she starts or places the stars going this way and ends at this point. And if you wanted to, you could actually stitch off to a point there with just your freehand quilting. Okay, the next one is an L-shaped corner. And you can see where the little extra stitches are here. You can see that this is where it starts and it stitches up and comes over here and ends. So this is an L-shaped corner. Then the border is added between it. So you're going to add your corner, place it on your other side, and then put your border in between. And we'll show you how to do this today so that you get those perfect placement. Okay, I've loaded my quilt and I have it marked. And for today's, we just have a sample that I've marked. And I have a corner here that I need to place, a corner here, and this border in between. So when I'm finished quilting, I want it to look like the quilt that I have here, my sample. The design that I want to use is called Arcs Border. And I've brought it in and it's at 5.38 in width and the height is 5.37. Now I'm going to, going to zoom in a little bit on this so you can see this. The measurement of this design tells me that the height of the full design is 5.37. That's not the measurement of this. So the width, the width of the full design is 5.38. That's the full design, not just that. So we have to do a little tweaking and figuring out how much bigger we have to make the full design to accommodate just that much of the border part. So we're going to go into uh, to rotate actually because I want this start point, first off this corner needs to rotate so it will fit in this corner of the quilt. So I'm going to rotate it. I could have typed in 90 degrees, but I'm just going to hit that 45 twice and it's rotating it around. So that's where I want the placement. Now this actually fits the corner that I have, so I won't have to resize it. But if you do, you're going to have to measure this and make sure as you resize it larger that this measurement matches up the measurement of the border that you have. We're finished with the rotation on this one and we're going to go to reposition because I want to reposition it in the corner. Now with this, we need to find my crosshairs. With that solid line, that tells me that my crosshair, my vertical crosshair, is someplace to the right off the screen. If I set re hit reset home, it's brought that back in, that's the home spot. Now if you look at this, it's not the same as the start point on this design. Not every design has the same start point as the reset home point. So just be aware of that. Okay, I need to reposition and I could reposition it from the top corner or I could move my crosshairs and place it here. And this is where I actually like to place it, is right in there and I can push my follow and zoom in on this so I can make sure that's same distance on those. I'm going to actually let the lines touch. 
I want to drag from that corner. I'm looking at my screen, so I want to drag from that corner. And then I want to look down at my fabric and move the machine down to this corner. I want my border to be a quarter inch inside of my seam. And on the outside, I like it to be a half inch, a quarter inch to accommodate for the, uh, the binding and a quarter inch to accommodate to, to match up on the inside part of, as well. So I have a plastic grid that's a quarter inch uh, measurement. I'm going to place this in here and right on my seam line and place my needle right where I want it to be. And then I want to move the pattern down to that point. So I'm going to push the button that says move pattern. And my crosshairs and my needle match up with my pattern around it. So I have positioned this correctly. Now I have my follow on. It's placed my crosshairs in the center of my screen and that with the pattern underneath it. It's kind of laid the pattern right down there. So I can follow this around and see if I have this correctly. If I like where it, that's going to work. That gives me a half an inch in there. Let's go to the corner. That works great over there. All the way down here. I like the way that has positioned on my quilt. Everything works out. Now it's time to start quilting. All right, I'm finished here. We're pushing done. Go to run quilt. Start quilting. My screen comes up. I have some options. I need to make sure that my tie off is on if I want it to be. My pull up, it's going to bring up my bobbin thread. My stitching, we do want it to stitch. And my settings. I'm going to change the uh, speed right now to 50% just to make sure that things are running. I may, want, I may speed it up, but right now I want to do a little bit slow. My stitches are 10 stitches per inch. I kind of think I will change that to 12. I like 12 on this. My tie-offs is two. I'm going to change those to one. I only want one tie-off. So what that will do is that will, the needle will go down. It will move over and make one stitch. It will go back into the previous stitch and then back and start stitching. So you'll actually see a, a needle strike three times before it starts. I, I could push the pause delay, but since I'm not going to be stitching over any part of where my thread would be, I don't need to do that. I'm going to start stitching. I have a viewer box here that I can use if I decide to change any of my settings as it's quilting. We'll resume. It's pulled up my bobbin thread. It'll do that small tie off. So as I said, this is a, a 50% speed. I could change the speed to faster. The design has finished quilting, it's doing its tie off, and then it will wait for me to uh, disable the motors, and then I can clip my threads. Now, I need to take this same corner and place it in the right side. All right, we're ready to do the right corner. And so as we look at the screen, we know we need to rotate this or mirror it. And I prefer probably to mirror it because I want that start point to stay down at the bottom and then move up for this one. So we're going back to quilt, going to mirror. And if I do a mirror this way, 
perfect. One time it's mirrored, the start point is at the bottom, and it'll start at the bottom of the design and stitch up to the, to the top. Finished with that, we're ready to position it. I have my plastic grid again, going to position. I want to place my crosshairs. I need to find out where that crosshair is. I know because that solid line is there that it's off somewhere in La La Land, so we're going to bring it back to us. I can reset home and it did that for me. So now I know where my crosshairs are and I'm going to slide that up looking at the screen, making sure that they're right there and I, I'm going to follow and zoom in on this a little bit so that I make sure that they're right where I want them to be. The more you zoom in on it, the more detail you can see. I like that. I'm going to drag from there, that corner, drag from here is the button. I'm going to move it over to my grid, quarter inch in, looking at my fabric, then move the pattern to that point. Crosshairs, needle, all in the same position with the pattern and the fabric. I'm ready to start quilting again. We're done. Run quilt. But what did I forget to do? I really want to do another follow around this to make sure. I'd rather do the follow than have to unpick because it wasn't exactly in the right position. So I'm, I can zoom in on this so I can see where I'm going. Looking at my fabric, coming over here. That's that half an inch again, I like that. Moving up, half an inch up there, I like that. That. Great. Okay. There is a trace outline, and I'll show you the difference between the two. I like to do a manual trace where I can actually move the machine around and see because the trace outline, as I zoom out on this, it will trace the outside of the box. And I wanted to be able to also trace this inside. And so that's why I use follow and do a manual trace. But we'll go ahead and let it do a trace. So it will move to the bottom left corner and we can watch it as it moves up. And sometimes that works, you can do that, but there are times that I really want to fine tune my trace or to follow it. And so that's why I like to use my manual trace. And it was still, still in place. So it's time to start quilting. Everything is like I like it. I think I can leave it at the 100 speed because it did fine with the first one. Move over to my start point, take a stitch and move aside. I'm bringing up my bobbin thread and resuming. I'll let it start stitching, do its tie off, and then I'll trim my threads. Oh, you could leave those and just bury them. I'm going to pan on the screen, and as I do that, I lose the lines that I've already traced, but it doesn't mean, you know, doesn't matter. It'll just go ahead and keep tracing the others. They white out as they've been traced. Sometimes you'll see a green line on your screen, and if you just tap your screen, that goes away. Placement was perfect on this. This is going to be an easy one to put my border in between it. It's going to look nice when it's finished. My machine is finished. It's doing its tie off. And now I'll disable my motors, move my machine aside, and I can trim my threads. Brings up my bobbin thread. Hold on to that and trim. Now it's time to put the borders in between. Now we're ready to bring in our border design from the library, resize it, repeat it, and stitch it across the quilt. 
I've brought my border in from library and it's the arcs border that matches the arcs corner and I need to measure the corner that I have so that I know how much to make the border that how to resize it. So what I'm going to do is I'm if, if you look up here you can see I have an X and a Y and the Y is moving up and down that means yes I'm going up and down and so I need to resize my border to match the height of my corner as it goes this L shaped part. And so I've reset home, zeroed out my, let's zero it out, because I had it, I'll reset home, let's place it, reset home, and then I'm going to move it up to the top so that it will match the top, and it is about 3.0, Three. I like that size. So now I can take this into resize and resize one repeat with that height. Go to quilt, go to resize, and I want to do just one repeat, one uh, keep aspect ratio of the height so that I know what my width is of, as, of one repeat. So we'll put that in and I'm going to lock my motor so things don't move because I know that I want it at 3.03. .03. Enter, keep aspect ratio, that will resize this proportionately. Looking up here, it was uh, a little bit bigger than that. I would need it to be this size and so there's my new measurement. 6 inches, 6.34 in width, 3.03 .03 in height. I'm finished with this screen. I'm going to the repeat screen to skew to fit. My height is 3.03, .03, but I don't know what my width is. So what I need to do is move my machine over to that end stitching point of my corner, reset home, and then move it to the right corner to that end stitching point, and that will be my exact width of this uh, border. So I'll disable my motors. I'm going to move it over to this point. And I like to actually drop my needle just to make sure that it's going to go exactly.